Well, hello there traders and friends right around the world. Thanks for joining me in this Thursday afternoon market recap. I do have a lot to speak about in this afternoon's recording. Let me break it down for you right now. The Dow Jones Industrial Average closed up just over 100 points. A lot of media attention is being given to one of the markets of our top three, which I will cover in just a moment. But before we get there, however, just have a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. You can see that we're still moving back into this resistance danger zone. So although the markets were up, or the Dow Jones itself was up 100 points, we are still yet to close above resistance. We're yet to close above the swing high in March 2015 and even the mid April swing high, which is a little bit concerning given that the NASDAQ has broken out essentially. The S&P 500, very, very similar. Look at the picture of this individual market. We're moving back up into the danger zone. We have moved a little bit more higher than that of the Dow Jones Industrial Average, but we are left with what we call you know, some form of a spinning top. It isn't a perfect type of spinning top, but you can definitely see both buying pressure from the lower wick and selling pressure right at this resistance level, leaving us right in the middle of this uncharted territory. The S&P has broken above, albeit very, very marginally, above the mid-April swing high just here. Things were looking very, very negative moving into the week. Since then, we have grinded back and forth. The same you know, has occurred on the Dow Jones and also the NASDAQ, but right now, we're really testing the extremes going back to the all-time highs in February 2015. If these markets choose to break out, do not stand in their way. Now, this is the reason for the video today and the more so in-depth type of look at the markets. It's really to do with the NASDAQ. Now, the NASDAQ today has essentially broken above the March 2015 high. You can see that we established a gap back in mid-March. We were calling it potentially an exhaustion gap, which was going to finish the intermediate swing to the upside before we saw a bigger retracement to the downside. All of this funky price action in between has been an absolute horror show. It's been a horror story to be involved in as a swing trader. At the moment, though, the market looks as if it's starting to break out above this level around 5,047, largely due to the help of a lot of earnings reports and companies moving in the NASDAQ. But have a look at our next resistance level. This resistance level here, about 5,092, just slightly higher, is the all-time high on the NASDAQ. We've achieved all-time high status on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. We've done it you know, quite a long time ago. The same is true on the S&P 500. The final market to actually hit that all-time high is the NASDAQ. What I need to do is just change to the monthly, take off my annotations, and then zoom out just to show you how close we are to this one particular candlestick over here. Now, this fact is in the volatility and the composition of that particular monthly candle where you can see extreme buying pressure and also extreme selling pressure with this long upper week. We are very close to hitting it. If you pay attention to this figure right here, and I hover my mouse over this particular monthly candle, you can see we get a high at 5,132. So remember that number, 5,132. Let me bring back my annotations. And as you can see, here we are at 5,000. And 47. We are marginally away from that all time high. We've used the analogy in the past of a, 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 a carrot being dangled in front of a donkey, and we're just slowly grinding, grinding, grinding closer, closer, closer to our target, or it seems to be closer to our target. It wouldn't surprise me at all, <clears throat> pardon me, to go up and hit this target over the next couple of days. We may even get there tomorrow. Once we get to this target, if in fact we have the strength in the NASDAQ to get there, you can expect strong resistance, all-time high, strong, strong resistance. Now, the reason for this video is the fact that all three markets, as, as at the close on Thursday afternoon, are not in agreement. We are not in agreement. So although the NASDAQ has marginally closed above the trigger, it's marginally closed above the swing high in March, we're still yet to make the all-time highs in this particular market. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is not doing the same thing. You can see it's late to the party. This is what we call divergence between markets or the intermarket analysis isn't adding up. The S&P 500, once again, at this particular time frame, is a little bit closer to pushing above those March swing highs, but we're still not there yet. In other words, these markets are not in agreement. And when the markets are not in agreement, you should be very cautious still of entering into bullish trades. I analyze these markets for people right around the world very, very neutrally. I don't have a bias one direction or another. When the time is valid, we need to be very, very cautious on the market. So when we start seeing terminal tops, 
present themselves and set up. We really need to have the discussion of what could be. At the moment, though, the markets are starting to push high. I'm the first to admit that, but I'm still not confident in the composition and the way the markets are actually moving at these all-time highs. It's very, very flaky. There's not a lot of conviction behind it. Moves are getting shorted. Intraday market volatility is surging. The Dow Jones Industrial Average, for instance, a couple of days ago, had 700-point swings intraday. So there's a lot of volatility, although on the surface of this market that the NASDAQ looks to be pushing out and it looks to be breaking out and all things look relatively good speaking for the NASDAQ one, we are very close to the all-time high. I'll just put ATH all-time high. Two, the other two markets, the Dow Jones and the S&P are not in agreement. So we're still waiting on the agreement according to Dow theory, which then will give us a little bit more conviction behind long trades. And again, looking at a lot of the individual stocks in our list, which make up a good composition of all three markets, a lot of these stocks are very, very flaky. Now, today I've just released a video in the pro analysis area, speaking about the Amazon earnings. Amazon is up considerably after uh, after our markets or in the aftermarket hours. And also Google has gapped up considerably as well, albeit up to about 565 on the ticker symbol GOOGL. It's not GOOG. Outside of those two stocks, we've got Caterpillar, which reported today. You can see just why I'm cautious. You see the initial gap up. You see it being shorted. Now, Caterpillar is a stock which is very good forward looking. It looks as if it was gaining a little bit of traction again. But what do we see? A very ominous candlestick on the daily. This is not normal for Caterpillar. When you see candlesticks like this, it indicates that something is up. And right now, looking into our list and looking at trade setups, there are trade setups, but with them come additional risk. And at the moment, personally, given the nature of the three US markets, looking at the volatility, looking at the whipsaw nature of the markets, you have to say to yourself, well, are these markets worthy of my own trading capital? Should I be putting my capital on the line to get invested in these markets because I haven't been invested or I haven't been into good trades for maybe two or three weeks? That's the question you need to ask yourself. At the moment, the answer to that question for me is to simply sit on the sidelines and wait for better confirmation. That's what I'm doing as a, as a professional trader, a trader who trades for a living. It's just simply not, not enough conviction behind these markets, behind these trades to really be looking out and forcefully getting into trades. Now, having said that, having said that on Caterpillar, please pay attention to this chart right here. The reason why is because yesterday, IBM or on Monday, pardon me, IBM reported its earnings after market. Tuesday, we saw a nice inside day, a, a counterattack type of candle. But today we've just blown and we've gone off to the races. Essentially, we've broken out above the swing high of Wednesday's candle. We've closed at a target at 169.76. This is something that we've been looking at and we've been on the chart for essentially weeks right now. It's another trade, which personally I didn't take. It's a trade where if you entered above the swing, of Wednesday's candle, the risk and reward was just completely, completely outside of the bounds, which we want to see as technical swing traders. You talk about having at least a minimum of a two to one risk and reward ratio. Well, this was more so favored uh, more heavily to the actual risk in regards to the reward of that composition or that sort of equilibrium, which we look for. Now, you can push trades, you certainly can, but with them come additional risk. Talking about Caterpillar, a very similar type of candle. You see a very dark candle today, very bearish candle, but given what has occurred on IBM, it's not outside the realm of possibility that we may just shake out and start seeing you know, more volatility and an increased surge in the stock price tomorrow. I've spoken about the counter argument as well. If we want to see some conviction, or if the market wants to give us some conviction to the downside, just how that trade will actually play out. So really right now, I've had a, a trickle of emails come in saying, look at the NASDAQ, look at the NASDAQ, You know, what's going on, what should we do? And really the best position is still cash. It truly, truly is. Do not get swept up in this mania at the moment. Sure, there, there'd be a time to warrant long trades if the trades were actually presenting themselves, but unfortunately they are not. Apple, for instance, is reporting earnings on Monday. So I mean, technically you have one day to trade Apple. As a swing trader, that's just simply impossible unless you want to get in and get out intraday. But with that comes additional risk as well. So I mean, once we shake out Apple earnings on Monday, we get through the daily composition of the candle on Amazon and Google for Friday's trading session, and we see how Caterpillar moves. Well, then the majority of our list, nine out of our 13 stocks would have actually reported earnings, which is great. We'll only have four left. And that's really going to sit us very well to capture market movement. If in fact they do want to break out and continue to the upside, then obviously we'll find trades in that direction as well. But at the same time, just giving us the possibility for an even nicer risk and reward ratio, if in fact these markets decide to start to roll over at these levels once again. It's something that we've been speaking about over and over and over. 
coming into the week just to refresh, it was looking very, very bearish, extremely bearish. We had so many open orders on a lot of ETFs like the Qs, the Diamonds, SPYs in the event that the markets did at least move back down to these levels. But even going back to late February or early February um, to 2015, just to say, look, these are incredible risk and reward ratios. Don't beat yourself up that they haven't materialized. If anything, the market is continuing to just, just behave abruptly. It's just, it's got a mind of its own at these levels and it's untamable. So just wait, let, let the market restore, let the market calm and we'll soon be placing some nice trades on these markets and individual stocks. That's the Thursday afternoon market recap. Have a great evening. If you, if you have any questions, email me, success at pivotpoint-trading.com. And you can schedule a call with me as well. I, I make a lot of calls to a lot of people around the world. I always have the time to speak to people who are interested and fascinated by markets and technical analysis. So please take me up on that as well. Have a great Thursday, everyone. I'll most likely be back with a Friday market recap. If not, I'll see you in the pro analysis class over the weekend. All the best. Goodbye.